This is iOS 9, the newest version from Apple just announced at WWDC 2015. It has a few new user features and a lot of under the hood improvements, and there are four basic areas that have been focused on. First is intelligence, then we have apps, and multitasking on the iPad, and then the foundation of iOS. These are all things that have been improved. First off, we have intelligence, and this is focused around proactive Siri. This is a feature that allows Siri to be more contextually aware of what's going on with your device. With this, your phone will now try to be proactive about what you want to do based on what you have done in the past. For instance, if in the morning you always listen to music and go for a run, when you plug in your headphones, your phone will automatically bring up the now playing menu. Or if you get in your car, your iPhone will automatically bring up an audiobook if that's what you listen to all the time. All this without having to do anything yourself. There's also a new search window and more features available for search. Now, the search window shows you commonly used apps and contacts and gives you links to nearby places, and breaking news. Developers also have access to a new API that can tie into search, which means you can now search within apps and be deep linked right to what you are looking for. These new search and Siri features require your data, but Apple is very careful in stating that all data is stored on the phone, and when something is needed from the cloud, it's completely anonymous. When it comes to the updated apps, there's been updates to both Maps and Notes, along with a new Wallet app and a News app. In Maps, there is now support for transit information. This is integrated into directions, so you can get step-by-step -step directions between transit stops, and you can also search for them through Siri, although at launch it will be only available in a number of cities around the world. Notes has also been updated with a number of new formatting options and the option for checklists, and you can also sketch right in the app. The Wallet app is the new name for Passbook, and now it contains all your credit cards and passes like before, but is now able to include loyalty cards and store credit cards. Lastly with apps is that Apple announced a brand new app called News. This is an app that aggregates articles from numerous publications and presents them with a custom layout and gives you a more enjoyable experience with your phone. This app also allows users to keep track of specific topics in certain publications. Next up we have the iPad, and this also saw some major improvements. Apple introduced a new quick type keyboard that allows you to use two fingers to scroll a cursor and to highlight text, much like you would with a trackpad. The keyboard also gives you common shortcuts at the top like copy and paste. Now on the iPad there's also support for multitasking. The feature is called slide over and this allows you to get windowed versions of apps to use side by side. There's also a split view which puts two apps next to each other and a picture in picture feature that lets you watch videos while doing something else. These features are available on the most recent iPads, but the split view is only available on the iPad Air 2. Lastly with iOS 9 is the under the hood improvements. Here Apple made sure to give better performance and battery life. There is a new low power mode that is said to extend battery up to 3 hours over the 1 hour that's supposed to be gained from iOS 9 alone. Also the update for iOS 9 is said to be only 1.3GB instead of a whopping 46 from the previous version. Also, now in CarPlay there's the ability to cast to different size and high DPI screens, and this will all be able to be done wirelessly. For developers, there have also been improvements. With gaming, we have Gameplay Kit, Replay Kit, and the Swift programming language is now updated to Swift 2, and it's open source. HealthKit has also been updated to track more things like hydration, and HomeKit has also received improvements to sense even more devices. Also at the WWDC keynotes, Apple introduced WatchOS 2, which is the second version for the Apple Watch. This includes support for native apps, which should make the watch load faster, and there's now the ability to add third-party complications and use new Siri capabilities. Also, there's a new nightstand mode that shows the time and alarm while charging. And finally, there's two new watch faces, one that works with your photos, and a time-lapse face that goes through different time in different cities. So those are some of the major improvements in iOS 9 and the Apple Watch. Right now it is in beta, so some things are likely to change, but the full release will be available in the fall. If you want to test it out yourself, there will be a public beta available beginning in July. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned to MacRumors.com for more. My name is Matt with MacRumors, and we will see you in the next one.